Today we're going to talk about hat shaping. 48 years ago, the owner of Resist All Hat Company, John Milano, taught me how to shape hats. And he taught me how on a Jiffy brand hat steamer. Um, we've been using a Jiffy hat steamer for many years. Um, but times have progressed and our hat business is, keeps getting busier. So we've uh, switched to a boiler system, a high pressure, high volume hat shaper. Um, the steam it produces is a lot more and a lot hotter. It's just, uh, it's a lot quicker. I can get your hat done better. It's going to look better and I can do it quicker with this new hat steamer. So this is what we start out with, the basic open crown flat brim hat. Um, looks just like that when we start. This hat is a percentage of beaver and a percentage of rabbit fur. Um, these are shapeable hats. We also sell wool hats that are lower price range that are for casual use to go to a party, to go to a wedding, maybe a couple times, but they're not reshapeable or creasable hats. You need to spend $180, $200 minimum on a good hat anymore. But if you do, it'll last you many, many years. We have people who spend up to $800 or $1,000 on hats today. So I have an order on a black hat. It started out like that and this customer wants a brick crown in it which is a not uh, not real common but it's growing again in style. So I'm going to show you how we I started the brick. I'm going to show you how we do it. So why a brick crown? What was the reasoning behind the question that? But, you know? I think uh, a lot of younger people like a brick crown, or it tends to be, hats are like uh, clothes or boots or anything else, the fashion changes. Um, when I was young, a brick crown was very popular. And then it went back to the old traditional, now what goes around comes around in brick crowns are coming back in style. It's much, much hotter and it's much, much more steam. So it's getting your hat fibers softened so you can shape them much quicker. One of the points about shaping a hat is you have to get your fibers soft enough to bend and mold but you can't get them too hot or they will lose their body. So there's a trick into getting just the right amount of softness in a hat that you're going to shape. So now we're just checking this hat to make sure that everything's centered on it. We put our thumb on the ribbon in the back, put our finger on the front, and we look down it and make sure that the crown is centered. And this one looks just about right. The young man who wants this hat happens to be a team roper and uh, so he's going to want this hat crease to what a lot of people in that particular uh, discipline or that particular event seem to wear. So he's going to want it creased to match the style of the event he participates in in the equine business. So it's going to be a little bit, uh, a lot different than what a Western pleasure person would wear. And quite frankly, it's different than what a bull rider would wear in most cases. Again though, you get a hat shaped to make your face look better. Just so the young man that's gonna wear this hat, will he have to have it reshaped periodically? Yeah, um, 
Fur felt tends to have memory, so it tends to go back. It'll tend to kind of get warped and go back to its original round shape. So after we sell a hat, we let them come back in a couple times, um, touch them back up for them. The other thing is nobody's head is, is a perfect match for the oval shape of the hat. So your head is going to warp the hat a little bit after you get it broke in and then we'll adjust the hat to uh, to fit your head. You ship hats all over, right? We, we do. Um, we certainly do, and... Um, because there's not a lot of hat makers, like experienced hat makers. Hat shapers. Shapers, yes. No, there's, yeah. there's not. I mean, in the, n very few people have been doing this for 49 years. And why do you think that is? <laughs> well, I was lo I was just a lucky young man. Um, John Milano at the time was the greatest hat maker in the business, and he must have decided that I was worth spending a little time with. So I was blessed with the get to spend time with one of the greatest hat makers of his era. Today we carry very few resist all hats because now it's a it's a big corporation and uh, not as personal as it used to be when John owned it. Oh it's it's huge and uh, it's an adjustment from a jiffy you have to be careful so you don't oversteam your hat. If you oversteam them, you get them too soft, then you have to sit and wait for them to dry. They actually lose some of their body. So if you oversteam a hat, you're in trouble. You're, you're better off to go back and hit it again and make sure you got it soft enough than get it too soft the first time. Purchase a hat. Can you do that? Sure. Um, like I said, one of our main hat brands is American. Um, and unfortunately, all hat brands, they're sized a little bit different. So they can go into a store that does, does increase hats, but try on an American brand hat. And um, then call me and tell me exactly what they want in a hat. Send me a picture of how they want it shaped and uh, what quality of hat they want, and we can get one to them. How do they measure? Um, they need to go into a store and try them on. Okay. Now, our private label hats fit exactly like a Resistol hat. So if they want to buy one of our Silver Spur hats, they need to go try on a Resistol, and then give us a call, send us a, send us a picture, and we'll shape it up just how they want it. Um, one of the things that we've been doing a whole lot of lately, and I don't have one in the store right now, are the old Gus McRae hats from Lonesome Dove. That's been a popular uh, shape lately again. What kind of dictates what's popular, what's not? I mean, the Gus McRae hat, Lonesome Dove was, I don't know, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago? Sure, so, you know, it, it depends. People who have lived the Western and equine lifestyle, that particular movie is always in their hearts, and that uh, character in Lonesome Dove, you know, was a, someone they admired, so they want to look like him. So are there any specifications or requirements from a hat perspective for the different um, breeds slash disciplines, like cutting horse, reining? you know, Western Pleasure, are there requirements that their hats have to be shaped a certain way to compete or not? Not according to the rule book, but to be acceptable and look like you belong in that discipline or that horse show class, your hat has to be shaped in a certain way. A cutter and a rainer are um, 
different and a Western Pleasure is way different. And then your rodeo event people, their hats are shaped way different. Um, there tends to be some basic styles that go with each, each uh, particular horse event that you're interested in or each particular type of horse activity you're interested in. What's the most popular shape that you're doing right now? Well, I'd say that we're still doing um, the traditional, um, here's a straw hat we just shaped, um, a traditional square front with a traditional cattleman type uh, crown, but uh, the sides are tending to be a little bit lower than a Western Pleasure person. This is a traditional, this is the most popular shape right here, right now. Do most people switch to straw in the, in the hot summer months? Or do, like, is there a rule of thumb there, like felt only in winter, or do people do whatever they want? People more and more tend to do whatever they want. But the old cowboy tradition, is straw hats for Memorial Day to Labor Day and felt hats the rest of the time. Now you do have to adjust that. Um, Texans tend to wear their straw hats longer because it's hotter down there. Um, up here in the northern United States, um, people tend to wear their felt hats longer into the spring and summer. So are you just gently applying pressure? Gently applying pressure and molding this. Um, this fur is all intertwined. It's like uh, it's like this, and we're just bending it and molding it into a different shape, and still keeping the fur intertwined. Well, the wool hats are very difficult to shape, and there are some hats that are just too poor quality to shape. Can you tell that just by looking at I them? I can tell them by touching them. Um, a lot of it is by, we can feel the fur and tell the quality of it. interchanging those more and more, or what do you see in that area? Um, there's an increase in the use of, of hat bands, but not near as much as there was 30 years ago, but I see the trend increasing to where people are adding uh, different colored hat bands and a little more decorative hat bands to uh, add a little different make their hat look a little different from everybody else's.